Fantastic. Um, my name is Steve Lincoln. I work for Invite, a, a commercial clinical testing laboratory. So I'll give you a little bit of that perspective on open data, particularly around uh, constitutional or germline genetics. Um, thanks to the organizers for having me here. This has been great. Um, these slides are all in the F1000 uh, boss channel, so you can get them there or you can email me. Um, one, arguably one of the most important parts of delivering genomics into clinical uh, practice is the process of variant interpretation. Knowing for any genetic variant that you uncover in a patient, what diseases it is perhaps related to, exactly how and exactly what that means for clinical management of that particular patient, which can depend on a whole bunch of things having nothing to do with DNA. Um, there are guidelines and practices that have been established by, by various medical practice committees as to how to do this. People who muck with these data should, should be familiar with, with perhaps many of these papers, um, including the ACMG and AMP guidelines on the subject. Um, and you know, to vastly oversimplify what they say is that in the process of interpreting a variant, you need to have experts in that specific domain. So for example, if you're looking at evidence of changing splicing, you need somebody who really understands RNA splicing assays to look at the papers, look at the databases that are available, and decide whether they're convincing evidence or not so convincing evidence. And only after amalgamating all different types of that convincing evidence can you come to a net conclusion about whether you think that variant is, for example, pathogenic or not in a hereditary uh, disease context, or, or you know, perhaps linked to response to a particular drug in an oncology context. Um, you know, I'll give you a good example of why this is hard. So, so this paper here seems pretty convincing from the title. It says this variant is a deleterious mutation. And, you know, but if you actually read the details of the paper, it actually kind of argues exactly the opposite. Um, yes, we've contacted the authors about this paper. They don't particularly want to retract it. I don't know why. Um, and you know we don't like to make boo-boos in clinical medicine. I mean, there's you know a number of case studies that have been floating around about you know some pretty substantial patient impacts that that came from variant classification or perhaps other um, you know medical decision making you know situations that we want to avoid. So to help with that, um, many labs, certainly not all have decided that getting all these data into ClinVar out for public review is a really good idea. Um, so uh, certainly our lab, we've been among you know, one of the top five contributors to ClinVar pretty consistently for the last few years. Um, we're joined by a number of other excellent laboratories as well. There's currently 761 submitters, almost a half million clinical variant interpretations that are in this public resource right now. And we think this is important because it allows inter-laboratory quality control, detailed peer review, and building consensus where we disagree way no other resource, including the published literature, allows. And again, that is the recommended practice from a number of important medical organizations, including the AMA, the ACMG, and the NSGC. Um, not everyone likes this idea. So for example, there's a laboratory in Salt Lake City that not only doesn't share data, but seems to go out of their way to bash open data sources, saying the disagreement in public databases precludes their wider use in clinical practice. Um, interpret interpretation accuracy is impossible with public databases because they're fraught with errors. Now, as much as I would love to use the word fraught in more sentences, I mean, what a, what a great word that is, it seems inconsistent with the data. So for example, in this clinical study that we published with MassGen and Stanford, we see quite high agreement, and it doesn't make any sense what they're saying. In this even larger study that we just recently published with the University of California Santa Cruz group looking at what amounts to 22,000 patients worth of data, we find concordance between laboratories is, in fact, quite high. I'll need you to read this paper for details. Um, and this is high here counting variants. Right? There's an important point here, which is if you count patients, it's even higher. Because the only variants we tend to have significantly different uh, classifications of are the very, very rare ones that you actually don't see in many patients. So this is kind of intuitive. So the question is, why do so many different studies disagree as to the rate of concordance? So some studies think concordance is high, some are low. This seems to exactly correlate with the studies that have released their data sets for public review and those that have not. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so 
You know, there are a lot of important things about mining ClinVar. If you do it, I won't have time to go through these, but, but you know, clinical area does matter. How you count concordance does matter. I, I point to this uh, paper that I'm a co-author of, Yang et al. just appeared in Genetics and Medicine, walks through a bunch of these issues, sort of best practices in using the data from ClinVar. There's some obvious stuff that that paper quantifies, like, for example, Data from clinical testing labs tends to be much more concordant than the data in ClinVar, but that didn't come from a clinical testing lab. Old data tend to disagree much more than new data, stuff like that. It's intuitive. Uh, the paper gives you some details on that. And with that, I want to thank all the, the wonderful people I've had the chance to work with on this, um, including the Santa Cruz group and, and many others. And perhaps I'll just leave you with this thought from the Dalai Lama, which is a lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity, indeed appropriately. Thanks, everybody.